Hey everybody, my name is Cliff Anderson, and I'm a librarian at Vanderbilt University. I'm also a member of a research group called the Computational Thinking and Learning Initiative. In this series, I'm going to introduce you to the fundamentals of programming using a state-of-the-art tool developed at Vanderbilt University called NetsBlocks. NetsBlocks makes it easy to get started by cutting down the number of mistakes you can make. And by reducing the chance for error, it will help you focus on the important stuff. So ready to get started with block-based programming? Stick around. This series is about learning to code using a development environment called NetsBlocks. If you're new to programming, the choice about where to begin can be overwhelming. There are so many options to consider, from C to JavaScript to Python and beyond. These languages are very different, but they all share one thing in common. Namely, they are text-based languages. That is, you write code by typing out instructions on the screen. Typing out instructions serves most expert programmers well. You can express a lot of complex ideas in very terse statements and expressions. Most software engineers aim to write more like Gertrude Stein than Henry James. That is, they aspire to conciseness over verbosity, although they can be elliptical at times. But textual programming languages prove challenging for newcomers. How do you know what commands to type when you're first getting started? We're all familiar with the idea of writer's block. That is, the panic of seeing a white page that you need to fill up with words. What should I write? The same kind of thing happens when you're programming in textual languages. If I want to draw a circle on the screen, what commands do I need to type in? If you're learning a programming language like Python or JavaScript, you'll need to look up those commands in the documentation, or more likely Google it, and then copy and paste your solution. And what happens if something goes wrong? Like maybe you dropped a parenthesis when copying your code into your text editor. Well, your code editor will try to highlight your mistake, just like a Word doc, a code editor may not always be able to pinpoint your mistake as easily. It basically just says, hey, something happened by the time I reached this line, and now I don't know how to go further. Your experience may vary by language, but tracking down a syntax error can take a surprising amount of time. And how do professional programmers fix these syntax errors? Well, they Google the problem, checking out sites like Stack Overflow to read how other programmers have fixed the issue before them. So here, I've got a JavaScript window in front of me. This is a cool site called Replit that allows you to program in many different languages. And so I'm just going to start off here and, well, you know, to begin with, what do I have to type? All right, I'm going to write a program here that's going to say hello to me in JavaScript. So here we go. Let's just write this out. So I'm going to have to say function hello. We're going to give it a parameter called name. Then I'm going to cut, put in a curly brace. And then I'm going to console.log say hello, comma, and then after the quotation mark, I'm going to put a plus symbol, and then I'm going to put the name that gets passed in with a semicolon. And then I drop down a line, and let's call that function. So we're going to say hello, Cliff, and my name is in quotation marks, and then I put a semicolon at the end, and let's run it. And sure enough, it says hello, Cliff. So it worked. But hey, look what happens if I just take off this ending parenthesis. Get like a bunch of red marks here. There's some squiggly lines. Let's see what they say. So this particular line here says TypeScript, comma is expected. Not sure if I needed a comma there. Here it says another comma is expected, but that's actually a period. Um, another comma seems to be expected. So a lot of commas seem to be expected. Um, this says declaration of statement expected. I'm not even sure what that is. Um, so you can see like there are a lot of errors, but it's not entirely clear how you're supposed to fix those errors. Now, we could go onto Google and see this, but it's, as you know, I just dropped a paren. And everything's back, and if I run this again, hello, Cliff, it works fine. The point is, it takes some experience to learn how to read errors, and it's easy to make errors, which is kind of a bad combination, because when you're a beginner, you make a lot of errors, and then you don't know how to fix them. So let's switch over now to NetsBlocks. The purpose of a blocks-based programming language is to lower the barrier to entry and to make it easier to program without having to Google everything. Here's the interface for 
the NetSblocks programming environment that we'll be exploring during this series. As you see, there are these nice sets of blocks along the side, and each of the blocks in this palette represents a unit of computation. You program in NetSblocks by selecting blocks and then snapping them together with other blocks in the coding area. That's this area right here. We'll see the results of the computation either in the coding area or on the stage. This is what we call the stage. The guiding metaphor for NetSblocks is Lego bricks. NetSblocks is designed to help you to program without running into those indecipherable error messages. In general, if the blocks snap together, your program will work, although it may not always produce the results that you expect. The cool thing about NetSblocks and other block-based programming languages is that you can play around with stacking these blocks just by moving them onto the scripting area and building bigger and bigger blocks. So if you ever have programmer's blocks, just try dragging some new things on and seeing what they do. So you see they stack right there and then you can test them out just by clicking on them. I'm gonna end this short video with another example of Hello World. We're gonna ask our mascot, Alonzo, to help us out a lot during this series. So this time we're gonna recreate our Hello World program in NetSblocks. And we'll do this by exploring the palette and finding the different blocks that we need to get Alonzo to say hello to us. So the first thing that we need is this say hello block. Here's Alonzo, and we want him to say hello to us. So if we click say hello, Alonzo says hello. But we don't quite yet have our name, right? So the next thing is, how will Alonzo know our name? So let's go here to sensing, and let's grab, ask, what is your name, and wait. And then there's another block that has the answer. So let's try this. Ask what is your name, a little box pops up. And we can an input box and we can put in my name here. Oh, didn't say hello to me, why is that? Well, here's the answer, Cliff, but we need to put it into our computation. We haven't done that yet. So how do we do that? Well, okay, so let's take a look here. Maybe we need another operator. And we're just gonna do this called join. And you see it says hello world, but I'm gonna put my name in and then we're gonna drop this right inside that slot. Okay, let's try it again. So here we go. Alonzo says, what's your name? I put it in Cliff, and it says, hello, Cliff. So that's a short example of a block-based program. We're gonna get into really deep and complex examples. A lot of people say like block-based programming is just a beginner's programming language. It's like programming with training wheels on. But you're gonna see throughout this course that that's definitely not the case. In fact, block-based programming allows you to get into much more complex ideas and concepts than you would have in many other programming languages or that you would be able to reach in other programming languages without a lot of experience. But the thing is it makes it friendly and accessible and fun to program, and that's the most important thing. We're here to have fun as we learn. So I invite you to stick around for the series on block-based programming, and let's see how far we and Alonzo can take you on this journey. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.